Hello, Drake Ogden Music Optimistic here. Today, I'm going to be giving my opinion on the Brad Taste situation that is currently going on. If you don't know, Brad Taste in Music is a, uh, like, reaction stream YouTuber. He will, um, post... He will he will go on long live streams where people can send in music, uh, for money. And then he will, um react to it. Although that's not always what his content has been. It used to be him doing like these very highly edited uh, reactions where he would cut down and it would be his opinion uh, and then the music would be context so that you can get better, you know, better context for what he's reacting to. But over the years, and specifically in the past year or two, his channel has essentially become a content mill. Whether you enjoy the content or not, it is hard to deny that over time his, his content has become less interestingly edited, it has become less focused on his opinion, and more focused on a supplemental source for the music. Because be honest, are you going out and listening to the Falling in Reverse albums that he listened to, the Broken Side albums that he listened to, the Hardy album that he listened to, listen to a little bit ago. If the answer to those questions is no, then that is the exact reason that his channel is being put at risk right now of deactivation. Because fair use isn't just entirely about what your intent is as a creator, it also is the viewer's intent as a viewer. Because you could put all the work in the world into making sure that your content is transformative or whatever, but if the viewer's intent is to consume this art or this copyrighted material um, through your video, Video, uh, giving you giving you income and stuff from another person's work uh, without going and seeing that work or if this is seen as like a supplemental um, source for it where they don't have to get that work for context or they don't have to listen to that one for for any reason, then that is a violation of fair use. Brad has released two videos about this situation, uh, pretty much how I found out about the whole thing going on, and to say that they're kind of manipulative is an understatement. First off, over the past year or so, Brad constantly has complained about the community that he's built up being somewhat racist, being somewhat homophobic, uh, commenting really vile shit during the streams, and uh, he's just constantly complained that this community is very toxic and he wishes that they would just behave differently. But in his video, My Channel is at Risk, he calls upon the community and uh, talks about how good they are, how good, how, how good faith they are, and is trying to pretty much play to their emotions. Which I guess would be fine if you respected your community, but time and time again you have demonstrated that you just flat out don't. He opens up this video by talking about how he does new music Friday streams going through the newest music of the week uh, for no profit, but that is just entirely untrue because you still get donations, you still get stream requests, you still get money, you're still profiting from the showing of this other people's work. Now, by no profit are you talking about you're not profiting directly from the music, like you're not profiting off of CPM or anything, because you're still profiting, you're still making money. In fact, when the whole falling in reverse situation was going on, wh whoever side you're on, because you don't have to love falling in reverse and you don't have to love Brad Taste, whoever side you're on, you can agree that it was very fucking childish of Brad to uh, basically resort to being like, well, actually I made $300,000 from streaming music this year. Like, you clearly are making money off of this, whether you want to admit it, you're not. You're, you're, in one breath, you're talking about, well, I'm not doing this for money. And in the other breath, you're talking about, well, actually, fuck you, I made 300,000 this year. You can't play both sides. And then following up that statement, he says that he makes reviews, posts reviews, um, you know, does reviewer stuff, uh, talks about the music intermittently. But anytime that I've tuned into a Brad Taste stream, uh, it's essentially been him sitting and just listening to the music, which obviously that is what you're going to do as you're listening to music, but that also presents the issue with cutting, with, with, with your content being a farm at this point of just cutting down live stream footage into a review format, because essentially what you're doing is having to find the little bits in your like nine hours of streaming where you are saying something, which is so few and far between that you essentially do have to use a good chunk, good chunks of the music to beef up the video. Now, normally this wouldn't be an issue if you're actually doing a review format or you have some sort of thing built up or even on his older content where clearly the focus was on the personality and his genuine critiques, like his old 21 pilot videos. If there are any videos that I come back to of Brad's, it is those because they're the most personality driven and he's actually giving more nuanced perspectives. Whereas on his newest content, it's essentially become unwatchable because for the most part, it is just supplemental sources for the music. It's just long snippets of 
other people's work um, with him intermittently just making like a sly remark. It's essentially become like Jinx style or XQC style reaction content. Like it, 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 it can be a good source and a good community builder, I guess, in the context of the stream. But as reviews, they don't entirely hold because you are entirely like the a good chunks of the review is just someone else's music. While editing, I remembered a recent example that kind of demonstrates this, his Knocked Loose review video thing. Um, it's one of his shortest videos he's made in a while because it's essentially cut down to just his reactions and what he has to say. Whereas any other video you look at, a lot of it is the music, whereas that one, it being cut down to just his opinion, he has barely anything to say. Now, by this statement, the streams get blocked afterwards, so it's not like it's a free form of just uh, pirating the music, and also it is always uh, going back into the pockets of the artist. It is always going back in the pocket of the artist. What is he talking about? Because for one, if he's talking about the streams themselves, he already contradicted his point right before that by saying they get blocked afterwards and no one can listen to them. Uh, so are you saying that the ad revenue from your chopped up review goes to the artist because you 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 don't work around copyright at all or are you saying actually i send the viewer dono to the artist because for some reason i doubt that's true because on these reaction streams you will get sent maybe tens of hundreds of artists and different songs every day and there's no fucking way that you were dispersing your income a hundred different ways like there's absolutely no no way. And also, from what I can tell, not all the reaction streams get blocked, because if you can find a link to a reaction stream, boom, you, you, you're you on you're on his channel and it's just an unlisted stream. So that's not really the same as it getting blocked. Now, fair use is a somewhat complicated issue, and it has been for like the entire length of fair use existing, but it's not really a good precedent to have channels like this around that exploit essentially the creative works of others for profit. Um, using very, very generous chunks of the work um, in order just to, like, say, oh, this is dog shit, this is trash. <laughs> because, yeah, I feel like I should give context. Falling Universe is terrible. Broken Sight is terrible. Half of the artists that he talk about, that he makes, that he chops up the reviews of for, are stuff that I wouldn't personally listen to myself. But whether or not you enjoy the music isn't important to the discussion of copyright infringement and the usage of fair use. And I feel like that is a point that a lot of people will try and go around in this discussion because um, it's artists that they don't entirely see as meaningful, which has nothing to do with fair use, you're still infringing on their copyright by using very generous chunks. Because, like, using snippets and whatever should be fine. There are, there are creators out there that do get flagged wrongly for using tiny snippets of work. Um, like, like my MGK, uh, Bad Owl Mockery video. I got a copyright claim for a Fortnite edit of a music video, not even, like, the main music video. I got flagged for, um, a Fortnite edit of a music video, which I can't dispute because that Fortnite edit doesn't exist. I've tried finding it again and again, and it's just one of those things that the copyright system is broken in that way, and so it's not it, it, it's just not working right. However, there are creators like Brad who will pretty much profit entirely off of the other person's work. That is what people are coming to your channel for. And then be like, oh, it, 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 it this is fair use because I'm pausing the music and talking every now and then. The one and pretty much only rule to fair use is it has to be transformative. The purpose of the content to the viewer has to be different than the purpose of the content uh, as the original creator intended. In other words, if you're reviewing an album and 90% of your video is you listening to the album, that is the exact same content, uh, context, I mean, as the original creator intended. That is not transformative, that is just repackaging someone else's content. Now, do I think Brad's channel should be deleted? No. If anything, I think he should just go back to basics, do what he was doing before of just, you know, making personal reactions and editing those down uh, into like a coherent video because this alternative that he's been doing over the past year or so of just him listening to stuff on stream and every now and then chopping it up into a video because he needs to put one out nearly every other day um, is it, just it's just lazy. It is just ripping other people's content because he's essentially built a fan base that is very hateful to outside beliefs, that is very toxic, that is very, very focused on 
on one man's opinion. And anyone who just listens to one man's opinion without taking their own stuff into consideration is an intellectually dishonest person. For example, throughout the Kendrick and Drake beef, uh, my partner has uh, made jokes and stuff about the whole situation, yet they had not listened to any of the songs that had happened. They had been getting their opinion through TikTokers and stuff like that and forming their opinion around other people's opinion. That is a very dishonest thing to do. If you want to be involved in something, whether it be the Kendrick Drake beef or music discourse uh, or talking about albums that Brad listens to, listen to the albums yourself. Do not just take one man's opinion and be like, yeah, this is my opinion now. Not only is that bad for music discourse, but that just creates a giant echo chamber that eventually ends up up and people believing that chopping up long samples of other people's music is a fair use because it's just flat out not. Now I expect this video to get dislike bombed by uh, Brad's uh, fan base and to be fair I don't hate Brad or his content I just think that it has become lazy over the years and that I wish it would change because this is, is just not fair use. It, it's just flat out not. So yeah bye.